Um, so yeah, my name is Sven Felden. I'm a PhD student at DESI in Hamburg. So here at this campus. And today I will present the results from our last beam time, where we probed uh, hyperfine interactions in ultra-thin beta-thin layers via nuclear resonance scattering. So this is part of my PhD project where uh, I want to explore the opportunities of using uh, nanolayers of beta tin at synchrotron sources by employing nuclear resonance scattering. So normally in thin film experiments with NRS, so nuclear resonance scattering, um, one typically uses RN57 layers. So um, for example, here a group probes static spin textures by putting a ultra thin uh, RN57 layer as a wedge type inside of such a magnetic structure and they hit the sample under different uh, lateral positions and probe the uh, orientation of the magnetic hyperfine field and thus they were able to resolve uh, the spin texture here. Now um, our approach is now to use beta tin here because beta tin is paramagnetic so it doesn't perturb the magnetic state and thus it can be embedded in non-magnetic metal. Another example for thin film experiments is to uh, use them for quantum optics in the X, hard X-ray regime. So there was a lot of work, a lot of work done in the, for Iron 57. So for example, here they put a uh, very thin Iron 57 layer inside of a multi-layer cavity and um, because in such a cavity the, electro, uh, the electric field is uh, highly, highly enhanced, um, the energy level shifts, which is called a collective lamp shift here. Um, the problem with iron is that it becomes magnetic above one nanometer, or tends to get magnetic, so um, it's normally, normally limited by this uh, uh, thickness here. So with tin, we do not have this limitation, and we can do uh, thicker layers um, to get more uh, a stronger interaction here. So to summarize that, we use, want to use the benefits of 119 tin, which is that it has higher magnetic moments and higher quadrupole moment. So it is more uh, sensitive to its magnetic and chemical environment. Um, also. Like I already told you, uh, beta tin is paramagnetic, so it has no magnetic hyperfine field. And that means uh, it is nearly a single line transition. So it has a very small quadrupole splitting, but uh, this is very small. Um, and also, of course, it has a higher resonance energy of 23.9 keV. So it has, of course, a higher uh, penetration depth. So there are also some drawbacks with tin, which is that uh, beta tin forms nano islands when it's deposited or sputtered deposited at normal conditions. So here Huben et al. Uh, used this to probe phonon density of states with nu nuclear uh, inelastic scattering on those nano islands here. And uh, second drawback here is, of course, that beta tin has a very low lamp power factor of 0.04 at room temperature. So the first goals of our experiments we have first to see how uh, smooth beta tin films are possible, how we can fabricate them, and um, to determine the hyperfine parameters of thin beta tin films in different materials, how they interact. So I will briefly uh, explain the experimental method here, so nuclear resonance scattering. We did here at Petra 3 at the PO1B line. So we hit our sample with a, with a picosecond X-ray pulse from the synchrotron under an incidence angle of theta. And the sample system looks typically like this. So we have some layered structure here. Could also have a microstructure where we focus our beam on it. And inside of the structure, we have a, a layer of the suitable Milsbauer isotope. So in our case, it's 190 tin. Um, we resonantly excite here the first magnetic dipole transition, so at 23.9 kV. We might also have here, for example, like here, uh, magnetic hyperfine field present and uh, we get some energy line splittings here. We then measure the time delayed signal, so the um, temporal response of the system, so the decay, 
And in the case where we have just one transition here, we would expect in this logarithmic plot just a single line here. Now here we resonantly excite all six lines here because the energy resolution of our, the energy width of our uh, uh, synchrotron here is uh, much broader than these line splittings. So we get a quite complicated uh, Korean superposition of all frequencies. So this pattern here is uh, called beat pattern. And then from this beat pattern, we can now reconstruct uh, re hyperfine parameters. So the electric field gradient or the magnetic hyperfine field. And we can reconstruct the strength and also to some degree uh, the orientation. Now that all these experiments work, uh, we have to make sure that this, these layers are very smooth to get a strong uh, uh, reflectivity signal and to al also have uh, defined layers here. So as I already told you, Betterton forms uh, nano islands when it's deposited under normal conditions. So that so this was to supposed to be a 20 nanometer film, which is clearly not here. So this is very likely due to the low melting point of tin at 230 Kelvin, uh, Celsius here. So that means that room temperature is already pretty close to this melting point. So our idea was now to cool down the substrate during the deposition. And um, we measured here the roughness with X-ray ref reflectometry and atomic force microscopy for different substrate temperatures. And indeed, below minus 50 degree, this roughness drops drastically here. And below minus 100 degree, we can really get a roughness below two nanometers. And further, we can get roughnesses below one nanometer here. So this is perfect now for all our experiments we uh, want to conduct here. So the first experiment we made where, where we uh, embedded tin inside of tantalum. So at first, we made a relatively thick film of 20 nanometers. And as you can see, uh, the temporal decay is nearly a straight line. So there might be some small features, but it's like assumed a single transition here. Now, um, if we apply an external magnetic field of 300 millitesla, we get here this drastic change in the time spectra and the decay. Um, and we can reconstruct a magnetic hyperfine field of 300 millitesla and um, its orientation. Now we made a thinner one with seven nanometers and we see that these features here get enhanced. So this is not a straight line anymore. So there might be some line splitting. But because we know not a lot about the system here, uh, the fitting process here is quite uh, ambiguous. ambiguous. Um, so we conducted conversion electron Mussbauer spectroscopy measurements which were performed here by Raghavendra Reddy and his group at the UGCDAE in Indoor. And uh, the corresponding uh, spectrum shows here that we have, of course, some beta tin and some tin oxide, but we also have also an additional chemical shift here, which is something from the tantalum. This is quite surprising because uh, even though seven, we are at seven nanometers, this still means that we have about 20 atomic layers. So interface effects shouldn't be, should play a role here anymore. So this really points here out how sensitive these 190 tin layers are to their chemical environment, so in which material we embedding them in. Now the next step we wanted to do is uh, to embed this inside of a ferromagnetic material. So we chose permalloy here, a nickel iron alloy. So we made a very thin tin layer of 2.9 nanometers. And um, the spectrum here shows clearly that we don't have a, transi a single transition anymore. We have yes, clearly a line splitting. Um, now, quite inter interestingly, uh, the time spectrum here changed quite drastically here for different incident angles. So we measured here at the critical angle and here inside of the waveguide minimum. The waveguide minimum, because we have here some uh, cavity-like structure with a platinum layer on top and platinum layer uh, below it. So we get a, a, a waveguide here inside. So this, uh, to, to explain this, we of again performed uh, TEMPS measurements. And we, showed here, uh, we saw here that we have a line splitting of 1.1 millimeter per second, um, which is very likely a 
electric field gradient here. Um, but this does not explain here this change of the time spectra for different incidence angles. This is uh, very likely a, a strong indication for a so-called dynamical beat. So this is a multi-scattering effect. So that means that we have more material than we expected. So this is only possible with, uh, to fit all these data, so the SAMS measurements, the NRS measurements, and the reflectivity measurements, if we assume a lump, an increased Lambeau's power factor of a factor of 10. So from 0 0.04 to 0 0.4. So um, this is quite interesting, and the reason for this we don't know yet. Um, so there might be that we don't have beta tin here anymore, so crystal changes inside of such a small uh, uh, layer or there might be also some confinement of the phonon density of states. So um, in conclusion, we uh, uh, managed to fabricate ultra thin smooth beta tin films um, when it's deposited under low temperatures, so min below minus 100 degree, um, so that all our thin films become now feasible. Um, the experiments show that we have here that that it confirms that the, seven, that the tin is very sensitive to its chemical and also magnetic environment. Um, and interestingly, we, sh we saw that in thin films, on this uh, one example here, we had a, an increased Lambeau's power factor. Um, now, we also um, tackled the problem to, uh, 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 to investigate uh, some spin currents. So, we wanted to uh, that a spin current travels through the beta tin and to see um, if we can detect this. Now we did some uh, rough calculations here and probably the magnetic hyperfine speeding is too low, but there might, uh, but DFT calculations here are uh, definitely from interest here. Um, and also we got some beam time granted now for uh, nuclear quantum optic experiments where our first uh, uh, experiment would be to measure the collective lamp shift at the corresponding tin energy at 23.9 kV. And with that, I want to thank all the contributors of this work. So the group at DAISY here, the PO1 beamline staff at Petra 3, and also the group from Mohagavandra Reddy at the UGCDAE in Indoor. And thank you. Yeah.